A long time before there were any self-propelled vehicles, there are designs of such vehicles that promise to change the future. But none of these vertical designs came as close to promising as the Kuno steam wagon. Indeed, its existence and the attention that it gets marked the beginning of a new period of technological development for using steam power and would prolong the use of steam in the future. Its importance in the pioneering development of motive power on road and rails is something that must not be overlooked by many people today. Nicolas Joseph Cunot was born on 1725 in Vaud bocon now part of Meuse, France. He was trained as a military engineer for the French army, an experience he would later use to his advantage. While he was working for the artillery branch, he saw the struggle that the artillerymen faced in moving heavy artillery pieces for some distance by horse. It was there that he recognized the need for greater mobility to pull artillery pieces and carry heavy loads. Unfortunately, many people in the 18th century have little to no knowledge on the mechanics for a self-propelled vehicle. Still, Cunot took the big challenge and began to envision his creation, a self-driving steam air capable of doing just that without fuss. He started experimenting the idea in working steam-powered models in 1765. Then, encouraged by the Duke of Trasul, an influential and powerful figure during the time of King Louis XV, he proceeded to the Paris arsenal to work on the prototype. By 1769, he, along with his assistant Brazon, had built a small version of the invented vehicle around a, around a basic wooden frame. The resulting vehicle had three wheels two in the rear and one in the front. The latter is powered by a small steam boiler with a tube connected to a chamber which contains its two pistons. They were attached to its hole like driving mechanism which situated close to the tooted gear that are attached on both sides of the axle. The driver sits behind the front wheel where the loads will be placed behind him. Turning is possible by the use of a double handle arrangement for the steering wheel in front of the driver's seat. Overall, it weighed at about 2.5 tons empty, and theoretically capable of carrying 4 tons of load on good ground. The mechanics in propelling the vehicle are surprisingly simple in operation. The steam pressure from the boiler rose and stored into the chamber. With enough pressure, the pistons were lifted upwards and the steam began to escape. The pistons would then drop down by their weight and cover the hole. This in turn caused the pole to push the tooth on the gear, therefore propelling the vehicle in a similar operation to a ratchet. The process is repeated until the boiler becomes enabled to produce enough steam pressure. The first vehicle was tested around Paris, carrying and pulling various loads. It achieved a top speed of between 3 and 4.5 km per hour while carried the intended weight rather well. The testing ended by accidentally hitting one of the Paris Arsenal's walls but fortunately didn't damage or fell. Upon careful inspection, the machine was found out with some major flaws. For starters, it is front heavy, and its boiler has a rather poor steaming performance, even by today's standards. This resulted in its poor weight distribution. This means that it can't climb slopes or cross any rough terrain, even without its intended loads aboard. Another major drawback of the vehicle is the range. Due to the poor steaming of the small boiler, the vehicle will stop after at least 10 minutes of travel. The boiler must then be relit and let the steam pressure rose again, a time consuming task. Also, it was very heavy to steer due to the heavy axle loading of the front wheel. More importantly, it lacks any braking system to stop it on time, a critical flaw that will lead to its dismissal. Feeling content on his work, Kuno built the second prototype a slightly bigger version of his first. Apart from its increased size and weight and a number of minor changes, it was the same vehicle while having the same flaws. A few trials were made shortly after completion and basic testing until it unfortunately ran out of control and knocked down a part of the wall to a garden, creating the first known automobile accident in history despite the contemporary issues on its lack of documentation. In any case, it and the lack of funds led the project to be scrapped later in 1771. Despite the accident and the flaws that both prototypes had, 
Hunor's inventions impressed many popular and powerful figures in the country. Most notably, General Guy Bouval, best known for his artillery system, and the Duke of Trussell himself. In 1772, King Louis XV gave Kuno an increased pension of 600 livres a year as a reward from his innovative invention. His life, however, was changed 20 years after he built his first car. During the French Revolution, his pension was suspended and he was forced to live in poverty in Brussels, Belgium. But sometime after the revolution, the future French Emperor, Napoleon Bonaparte, restored Cuno's pension and successfully convinced him to return to France. He lived in Paris until his death on the 2nd of October 1804, aged 79. Despite his demise, his invention's story ended rather differently. It was thought by many that Cuno's inventions were destroyed or lost before or during the French Revolution. But in the year 1800, one of the prototypes was found and was preserved. It was finally handed to the Museum of Arts and Crafts in Paris, where it can be still seen today in its partially original condition. In 2010, a replica of the vehicle was made by the students from Paris Tech with support from Kuno's own native commune at Vaud Vacon. It ran for the first time in 241 years on the streets of Paris, demonstrating the 18th century technological wonder to an amazed and curious crowd, much like on the inventor's time. Use of his invention eventually spread far and wide outside France, even long after his death. Many countries viewed it as innovative and original. The big car companies even called it as the grandfather of the modern automobile. But it doesn't end there. It not only took the world by storm, but also started a new competition which contributed to the industrial revolution's rise to the peak in terms of technological development. Kuno's invention is a technological wonder that deserves to be preserved and remembered. It paved the way to develop and innovate in many areas to build the future as it is today. It not only influenced the development of steam traction, but also accelerated the development of motive power on land in general. Many classic vehicles in history owe their existence from the Kuno. There are so many things that will be changed without steam traction, for better and worse. There are so many things that will be changed without this invention, for better or worse. His vehicle may have failed to exceed his inventor's expectations, but he succeeded to make it real when many others did not. His idea, passion, determination, and perseverance had contributed a lot on the unintended success of his invention. Truly, the Kuno steam vehicle is a steam engine as old as time.